All right, thanks, Arvid. Uh, good morning, everyone. So, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm Michael August. I'm a computer scientist at the uh, Naval Information Warfare Center Pacific, uh, representing the Department of the Navy. And uh, today I'm going to talk about uh, the DARPA Open Programmable Secure 5G program, or OPS 5G for short, as an example of collaboration between government and the open source community. And actually, the founder of the OPS 5G program was uh, Dr. Jonathan Smith. And he presented at this forum last year. So uh, next slide, please. So for the agenda, I'm going to briefly introduce DARPA. I'm, I'm sure no, no uh, intro needed. You just heard from Tom, but uh, I'll give a little background there. And then uh, talk about the uh, Ops 5G program, as well as some of the focus areas of the program. And then I'll get into the collaboration that um, we, the Navy, and DARPA have been having uh, with the Linux Foundation in particular. And then I'll talk about the uh, 5G Super Blueprint uh, from LFN, and then what our plans are going forward for leveraging the 5G Super Blueprint into uh, something called Mojito. And then I'll finish up with a call to action uh, for the open source 5G community. So next slide, please. So this is just to, uh, to give kind of a, a brief uh, rap sheet of, of some of uh, DARPA's accomplishments and, and their mission. I'm sure most of you have heard of DARPA, right? The Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency, with the ARPANET being the precursor to the internet uh, as one of the most famous developments, right, coming out of DARPA. Um, DARPA's mission is to make pivotal investments in breakthrough technologies for national security. Uh, with enabling technologies, you can see on the bottom of this chart, leading to military capabilities, as you can see on the top. And a recent example of this, uh, which is, is very relevant, can be seen in DARPA's investment over the past decade in nucleic acid-based vaccines, which you can see on the upper right side of this, this chart, uh, which were critical to the rapid development and mass production of RNA vaccines for COVID-19. So, for example, in 2011, the ADEPT program developed nucleic acid vaccines and the accompanying RNA vaccine technology, and then uh, following up to that program was uh, the P3 program of the Pandemic Prevention Platform in 2016, which provided for rapid discovery, testing, and manufacturing of antibody treatments to fight emerging diseases. So these programs began with the goal of finding rapid ways to protect American troops running into a new virus while in the field. But they ended up having positive impacts, not just on our national security, but also for society at large. So that gives uh, kind of a, a sampling of the scope and the impact uh, that DARPA's investments can have, uh, um, you know, broadly. Uh, next slide, please. So this is really a... Uh, you know, a, a pioneering effort uh, that we're doing with Ops 5G because uh, you know, typically with proprietary systems, you know, a single manufacturer control the entire hardware and software stack. And that can make it easier and faster to develop the software for that proprietary system. But on the other hand, if you uh, do an open source approach, open source really opens up the development of the internals of the system uh, to, to, you know, various, various eyes. And so some of the advantages uh, that that brings is, you know, code visibility and portability. And the portability provides uh, or enables uh, us to decouple the hardware and the software. And that increases the difficulty of a supply chain attack. And it also makes it easier for manufacturers to introduce uh, new hardware into the market. So while open source is typically more portable, uh, that portability necessitates the introduction of a hardware abstraction layer. So this is, this is kind of the, the double-edged sword of, of open source. And as a result, the open source code development process can take longer uh, than if you were to develop software for the proprietary system because of that increased complexity and then the need to support disparate types of hardware uh, and, and so the Ops 5G program really seeks to address this challenge um, by pursuing research leading to the development of a portable, standards-compliant network stack for 5G mobility that is both open source and secure by design. Um, so with standardization, we get inter interoperability between systems, and then open, with open source, we get the modularity and flexibility within the system. 
Uh, so uh, with that, uh, I'll, I'll go a little more into uh, Ops 5G on the next slide, please. So really the vision for the program is to augment open source software to obtain a secure 5G system. Uh, and, and in particular, to allow for implementations of a 5G system, which are secure, even though they're built with various components, which may or may not be trusted. So by decoupling the hardware and the software into a modular system, uh, Ops 5G really seeks to provide a mechanism for rapid software development, as well as security enhancements to the 5G system itself. And then the idea is to transition uh, those developments back into the commercial network operators. One of the key aspects of 5G, of, uh, of 5G itself is programmability. Uh, and, and in particular, the introduction of software-defined networking and network function virtualization. And that programmability means that uh, you have a rapid means to adapt to network attacks, but at the same time, you then introduce the possibility of hijacking or misuse of the network uh, in unforeseen ways by adversaries. So the Ops 5G program, it, it aims to take advantage of the network programmability to enhance network security and defenses, while at the same time preventing an adversary from taking advantage of that programmability. Uh, so uh, now I'll, I'll talk about the, uh, the four different focus areas or what are called technical areas within the Ops 5G program on the next slide. Uh, so the, the Ops 5G program is broken down into four different technical areas, TAs one through four, as I referred to. Uh, and so I'll briefly, br briefly talk about each one now. So for TA1, uh, standards meet software. The idea is to decrease the time required for updates to the Ops 5G open source software in response to new versions of the 5G standards documents that come out. Uh, so actually two performers on, on this technical area, uh, SRI and Khaki, are focused on accelerating open source software development by providing a set of tools for performing machine translation of those 5G standards docs, uh, such as those from 3GPP and Etsy. And, and what we find is that the structure of those documents actually enables machine extraction of information relevant uh, to, to implementations of those standards. And, and that therefore it makes it possible to perform various um, automated processes such as compliance testing, uh, proofs of correctness, uh, integrity verification of the protocols. Uh, so in this way, you know, translation of the standards documents into some kind of intermediate representation as we can see here, uh, or some kind of domain specific language could accelerate the software development process. In addition, uh, the, the TA1 performers here, these two have been tasked with looking at how to actually perform automatic code generation from that intermediate representation uh, in order to automate the, the software development process to the maximum extent possible. So this is really a, a fascinating area of, uh, of research. And, and so th this, this technical area is, is, is really part of how Ops 5G program seeks to speed up the open source software development process for the, uh, for the, for the open source 5G stack. Uh, so now I'll move on to TA2, next slide please. So TA2, a cross-scale uh, 5G node and network security, uh, th this TA uh, looks to achieve a usable, scalable, zero trust security architecture for devices ranging from, you know, small form factor, long lived IoT sensors out in the field to, uh, you know, large servers in your data center. And so this architecture intends to have a minimum impact on the size, weight and power, as well as the price. And, and really it's, it's focused on end to end security of the network. Uh, and that includes network access control, remote attestation, uh, implementation of uh, software-based route of trust, uh, as well as a variety of other techniques. And, and actually one of the performers is using energy harvesting from the RF uh, itself, uh, from, from the base station to, to demonstrate uh, the potential of intermittent computing. Uh, you know, on a very low power device. And, and you can use that actually to perform cryptographic operations intermittently as you're receiving power. Uh, so uh, that, that's a feel for, for, for TA2. Next slide. Uh, TA3, secure slices. Uh, that's actually, uh, I'm, I'm the lead in this area. So 
Uh, this technical area is focused on mitigating new attack, attack surfaces uh, that are introduced by virtualization and network slicing with, within the 5G stack, uh, such, such as you know, side channels and whatnot. And um, there, there are various cryptographic techniques, including the, uh, fully homomorphic encryption, where you can, where you can actually uh, perform computation directly on encrypted data uh, without ever decrypting the data. Uh, threshold encryption, proxy re-encryption. These are various cryptographic techniques for um, distributing data and partitioning it uh, amongst multiple uh, participants, as well as uh, forwarding data in a secure way. Uh, so all these cryptographic uh, techniques that are novel are, are being brought to bear on, on this uh, secure slicing problem. And also there are a number of network obfuscations that the uh, performer uh, USCISI is developing in order to prevent adversaries from performing network traffic analysis uh, based attacks, uh, wherein they could infer information about the network structure or communications between nodes in the network. Uh, so really, uh, it's, it's, it's a very interesting array of uh, techniques that are being brought to bear on, on uh, you know, network slicing security. Uh, next slide, please. For TA4, principled programmable defenses, the objective is to change programmability itself from a threat vector to an enabler of security at scale. And so the two performers working on this area, uh, Georgia Tech and Periton, they're developing a pushback architecture uh, to, to rapidly detect distributed denial of service attacks and then to rapidly mitigate against those attacks. And, and we're talking about at a very large scale uh, and so we're doing uh, simulations that are on, on the order of a billion uh, nodes at this point um, in order to demonstrate the potential of that pushback architecture. So really fascinating work here. Uh, next slide, please. And, and so uh, really in order to take advantage uh, of these enhancements uh, the resulting from these, these four technical areas, you know, the Ops 5G program wants to apply them to open source 5G projects. And, and so, uh, the founding program manager for, for Ops 5G, Dr. Jonathan Smith, uh, you know, he, he, he initiated an agreement uh, for cooperative research and development between DARPA and the Linux Foundation, which has been absolutely instrumental uh, in, in, in moving the technology forward and, and, and I think will uh, be instrumental in transitioning it going forward. So uh, th this, this has uh, resulted in the development of US GovOps, as you can see on the left here, which is uh, an open software initiative uh, that's focused on accelerating the development of a of a 5G end-to-end -end stack. Uh, and so uh, really our vision is that the Navy being the independent test and evaluation team for Ops 5G uh, will take the deliverables from those Ops 5G performers that I just uh, mentioned and then test and evaluate them within our 5G testbed environment. And then we're, uh, those performers are then going to take that uh, tested the software and they're going to push it into the Linux Foundation projects uh, that comprise a 5G stack. And then we'll be taking the full 5G stack from Linux Foundation and deploying that at various DoD sites throughout the country. Uh, so, so really, um, there's, this, is, this is a great collaboration. And um, it, it, I think it's, it's going to be... Uh, absolutely instrumental in pushing the security enhancements and the, that rapid software development uh, out into the community and ultimately out into the, uh, the commercial network operators. So next slide, please. So here's just a sampling of uh, some of the, uh, uh, you know, projects, Linux Foundation projects that uh, the Ops 5G performers are uh, contributing directly to. Uh, and so, you know, we have ONAP and Open Daylight. So for Open Daylight, we're uh, looking to develop some uh, OpenFlow plugins to support uh, newer versions of OpenFlow directly with an Open Daylight. Uh, also, um, some of our performers on Ops 5G are contributing to DPDK and FIDO, uh, some of the DDoS, rapid DDoS detection and mitigation uh, algorithms that I, I just uh, referred to. Uh, for uh, FIDO, for example, and then uh, also uh, contributing to Intel Smart Edge Open, uh, formerly Openness, uh, and uh, uh, Zephyr uh, real-time operating system. So a lot of work going on in this area. Next slide, please. And so one of the, uh, the things that the Linux Foundation uh, has done, which is, is great, they, they've spearheaded a 5G super blueprint, uh, which can be seen here at, at a high level, and uh, you know, it, it encompasses uh, 
the, the whole architecture for 5G, including uh, ORAN Alliance projects, uh, MAGMA for the core, uh, the underlying uh, network function virtualization infrastructure, as well as blueprints from a crano uh, for the edge and whatnot. So there are, there are a lot of pieces that are that are coming together and uh, and are going to be integrated with this uh, 5G super blueprint. Uh, next slide, please. So here's a more detailed uh, look at that uh, with the implementation architecture diagram with uh, with with the, you know more of the uh, the component projects. So th this really shows the uh, the components comprising the end to end uh, full stack uh, architecture. And so that, that includes the management and orchestration. As you can see on the right there, uh, the virtual infrastructure management, uh, the SDN controllers, the virtualized infrastructure, um, that, which includes the, the virtualized compute, storage, networking, uh, hardware acceleration. Uh, there's even a telecom grade edge stack. Um, there's uh, software for facilitating development of, of use case specific edge applications. Uh, it is various uh, various projects here. Uh, there's uh, you know the ability uh, with with software to communicate with uh, uh, IoT devices, uh, you know, and even the operating system for constrained devices and Zephyr, uh, and then um, you know 5G network functions based on the on the Magma open source core. So uh, you know the architecture though is not starting from scratch. The parts of it already exist uh, with with the help of companies. So, for example, Fledge is already integrated and, and tested on top of Eve. Uh, EdgeX Foundry and uh, the Intel Smart Edge Open are already part of a 5G ready edge stack, uh, which has been demonstrated. ONAP already has two releases of functionality that are ready to support uh, 5G sl uh, slicing capabilities. And uh, Anukit, uh, formerly the, uh, the cloud infrastructure uh, telco task force, you know, it already has uh, developed Kubernetes and OpenStack reference uh, architectures and reference implementations, uh, you know, for, for telecom grade, the cloud environments. So really, uh, you know, we, we're going to leverage this, this work that's already been done and the momentum uh, coming from, from all these different projects. Uh, so the, the Ops 5G program will align with this, with this super blueprint and then deploy it uh, as part of a prototype network uh, called Mojito. So I'll go into that on the next slide uh, and then I'll wrap up here. So, uh, you know, our, our goal at, at DARPA and, and within the Navy is really to take that 5G super blueprint and deploy it at various sites within uh, a, a DOD 5G prototype network, which we call Mojito or multi-site POPS 5G joint independent test option uh, and, and multiple DOD bases, um, each of which has a, a different use case will leverage that full hardware and software stack that we're providing. And, and then the stack will um, consist of those, those super blueprint projects as well as the security enhancements that the Ops 5G performers are developing. Um, and, and so really having the ability to leverage that 5G super blueprint and then contribute performer enhancements directly into the open source projects uh, that, are, that comprise that, that super blueprint is going to be a huge advantage for us uh, in order to accelerate the development of the, you know, of a full 5G stack. And it'll also, you know, promote the adoption of those security enhancements uh, by companies that make use of the 5G super, super blueprint and the resulting uh, software stack, which, which, is, which is great. Um, you know, not just for the DOD, but for, uh, you know, the, the nation uh, in general. So next slide, please. So, so I'll wrap up here with uh, just, uh, you know, uh, I'd, I'd like to encourage community participation in the development of the 5G Super Blueprint projects, uh, and in particular on some of the projects that I mentioned earlier. Um, you know, one of the performers on Ops 5G is, is as I mentioned, is planning to develop uh, um, versions of, of OpenFlow, uh, you know, version uh, 1.4, 1.5, for example, which have features they need to do the rapid DDoS detection and mitigation. Uh, and they're going to be developing that as a plugin to open daylight, but they're not implementing all of the open flow version 1.4 and 1.5 functionality. So this is really where, you know, the community can uh, come in and uh, contribute. And, and so uh, I think there's, there's great, uh, you know, opportunities here for uh, community participation uh, as well with, with Magma being our core uh, contributions to the core and, and, you know, in particular, the network slicing capabilities. That's something that we're very excited about. Uh, so if you're interested in participating, feel free to check out our website. It's at uh, uh, usgovops.org. 
Uh, that's usgovops.org. Um, there's a sign-up form there where you can get more information about how to participate. And uh, so, so, you know, we, we really appreciate this opportunity to work with the Linux Foundation. And I think this is going to be a very fruitful collaboration going forward. So uh, with that, uh, thank you very much. And uh, I'll open it up to uh, any questions that you have. Excellent, uh, Michael. I, I couldn't have said it better. So you, you basically went through the whole kind of end user use and, and, and we are really excited. And I think uh, asking the community to help uh, not just US government, uh, which is you know, all of our duties, but more importantly, how these research can benefit globally back into the open source community, right? So that whole exactly. loop you're doing, yeah. No, excellent. Um, and, and really appreciate uh, you know, such an awesome presentation. I'm sure the attendees have enjoyed it. So with that, I think we are at time uh, for the break, uh, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, but again, thank you, Michael. And you. Uh, we're going to take a break. Um...